Okay, so we're gonna fill in more of this as you can see, but for now I wanna hit pause on this diagram and I wanna kind of like formalize or systematize the process I introduced to you um, on Tuesday about how do we t determine which one of these kinds of stationary points it is. So that's where I'd like you to now have a look at the piece of paper you picked up uh, on your way in today, which looks like this. I know it looks complicated, okay? But I promise once you become more familiar with it, you'll be looking at thinking, oh, this is not that big a deal. I'm just trying to represent it visually for you. That's the first thing I'll say. The second thing I'm gonna say is, it's actually gonna get more complicated. In future lessons, there's actually, you might notice a big gaping hole on the bottom right hand corner of this, this diagram. That's because later on, next week probably, um, we're gonna fill it. So anyway, one step at a time. Here's where we're going to begin. Um, I hope you notice that the, this gigantic flow chart is split into two sections. Two sections, there's an above and below this fat dotted line, okay? Those two sections correspond to those two questions that we ask about stationary points that I introduced on Tuesday. What's the first thing we ask about stationary points? Uh, we ask, where, where are they, right? Where are they? It's the first basic thing, right? So the word we use with that starts with an L is locate, right? So the top half is just about locating those stationary points. So that's what that part of the flowchart is. And then down below, if you find some stationary points, what's the thing that you do with them? You're gonna try and work out what, which, one, which one is it? Like there's so many different kinds, right? So we say what, what kind are they and that the language we use is we determine the nature, right? So determining the nature of these stationary points is the second half of this, okay? All right, so let's have a look at where we begin. Right at the top, we start with, they, they will hand you, if they're looking for stationary points, they'll hand you the actual function. So you begin with the original function. Now, as we go through this, what I'm actually gonna do is actually work through an example with you. So here's an example I'd like us to actually work with y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. It's a very simple looking graph. It just has um, a few features that are relevant to us, as you'll see. So this is going to be the example that we work through as we step through the chart, okay? Now, if you know that you're looking for stationary points, the first thing that you have to do is you've got to, what's the process we're going to start with? Differentiate. We're going to differentiate, thank you. So that's the first step, right? You differentiate. And what that's going to give you, of course, is the derivative. And this is its own sort of like, oh, here's the first thing that I do. So let's go ahead and work out what the derivative of this particular function is. If I've defined the function as y, I'm going to go dy and dx, and I think I already heard it. It was 2x minus 4, fantastic. I hope that's become, it's an easy looking function, so this becomes reflexive. So there's the derivative, right? And then I wonder if you recall, the next thing that you do with that derivative, you're looking for stationary points, so you're going to solve, when is that derivative equal to... Zero. zero, fantastic. So you're going to solve dy on dx equals zero, okay? Uh, we'll, we will do that in a second, by the way, but before we do, there's one of two things that happens after this occurs, right? Uh, you will solve it, and in most situations, um, you're going to find there are some stationary points, right? Um, you will find that there, there is a place or places where the derivative is equal to zero. But it's just as important, I'm going to ask you for some examples of this in a second. It's just as important to recognize that sometimes you try to do this, you try to solve when's the derivative equal to zero, and you can't do it. Um, there's no solution that arrives. Why for yes? Say it again. Why for yes and n for no? Uh, I'll write yes for you, just to clarify, okay? Um, now, I said I was going to do this. Can someone give me an example of a function, and you know a bunch of these, that you're not going to be able to find a solution to this? Say it again. 1 over x. 1 over x. What does 1 over x look like? That's the, um, that's the hyperbola, right? It never comes to a place where it stops. Um, it gets really close to that as, at the asymptotes, but if you try and solve for dy and dx equals 0, you won't find a solution. Give me another one. A semicircle. Hmm. Now I'm going to say it depends on what kind of semicircle it is, and I'm going to park that thought. We'll come back to it later. Think, think of even simpler functions, guys. Look at all of the. We spent two weeks a straight line. If if it's not horizontal, right? Any other straight line will never have a stationary point. Okay. How about how about you know? Think carefully. We're in sort of like. COVID-19 situation, what kind of functions are really important to us right now? Exponential functions do not turn, right? 
logarithmic functions do not turn, there's no stationary point of any kind, okay? So therefore, what we conclude off of that is, um, if there's no solution to do n x equals zero, then there are no stationary points. Simple, okay? So when we go through this process, you don't always get an answer out of it, and that tells you some information, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's go ahead and solve. So here's my derivative. Um, do x equals zero, so 2x minus four equals zero, right? So you guys can probably, because it's a simple equation, tell me what the solution is, right? It's x equals two, very good. So I've got x equals two, I found a solution, and what that tells me is, hooray, stationary points um, exist, and I will put points, I'll put the s in a, in an, a pair of brackets, because um, there may be, as we've just determined, there may just be one, um, but we at least know there are some to work with, okay? Now, we're still in the top half of this, we're still trying to locate, right? So I want you to help me remember, and the arrow here helps you out, right? What's the final step in locating a stationary point? Because that arrow going back up is meant to tell you something. You have, to make the have a think. Why is that arrow heading back up to the original function? Why would I go back to that? Say that, that again, Shane Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're just okay. randomly... Shalini, yeah? Okay, fantastic. I'm going to take this x value, and I'm going to substitute it back into the original function because, and we should write that by the way, I'm going to uh, substitute x values back into the original function. Oh, of course, I'll only substitute one x value if I've only got one. And why am I doing that? It's because if I've got an x, to find where that stationary point is, I also need a y. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, if x equals two, then y is equal to, and I hid the whole function back there, so let's have a go here. You've got 2 squared minus 4 lots of 2 plus 3. Okay, so 4 take away 8 is negative 4. So then you add 3, which gives you negative 1. So I've got an x value, I've got a y value, so therefore I can say uh, the coordinates, 2 comma negative 1. That's my stationary point. So at this point, um, I'm half done, I guess. I've located the stationary point, and so far that's, that's all I needed. Okay, I've got my coordinates as my example. But as we've um, already pointed out, this is not usually where you stop. Normally we want to find out a bit more. So I'm going to transition past onto the second half. I'm going to determine the nature. Okay, it's right. Yeah. you say therefore at this point, Good question. Um, so what I would say right here, like I'll, I'll write on the left hand side where my conclusion is. At the moment, all I know is that this is a stationary point. Um, because I don't know what kind of stationary point it is, that's all I can say, right? Um, I could say that y equals x squared minus blah, 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 blah. I could say it is stationary at this point. All these things are equivalent, okay? But it's worth noting, I don't usually conclude at this point. I usually go to the second half, okay?